try. Well, a huge week of Super Rugby action to kick off the season. Stephen Halls, how did you find it? Exciting week of rugby. I think the no huge surprises though, but still good quality football started off in. Canberra Friday night, it was, it was a good weekend. Talk us through that game, they, they promised an expansive style and they certainly delivered, didn't they really? That first half against the Canes, they were just sensational. Yeah, Stephen Larkin came out and spoke about a, a new style of footy, or a bit more flair in his back line, and he got a bit of flair out of the forward pack too, which I found that first try from David Pocock quite, quite different to what they would have done last year. So the hurricane forwards there were sitting on their heels ready to smash that more. But Itavay comes around the front, a little bit of a trick shot. first opportunity to Moore and they went through this. It just shows you how they're trying to evolve as a team. Steve Moore, nice inside ball from a lovely offload from Itavea. Steve Moore, one of his best games, played his 150th but played like a 20 year old again and it was good to see. The Brumbies were just fast and the beauty about the Brumbies is they get to bring on replacements like Josh Man Ray. Big Look bongo. Douse it's a little offload here to Sam Carter. They call this showtime in Canberra when it, <laughs> when it gets uh, 30, 40 points plus. Sam Carter can't believe it. Look at him shaking his head. He doesn't know how he ended up with that try over the over the line, but again, the beauty of the Brumbies, the depth and the quality they can bring off the bench. Long season, to be able to rest Steve Moore at the 56th minute mark and bring on Wallaby replacements, that just shows you why everyone's tipping them to be the favourites. And what about Thomas Cabelli? There was lots of talk going into this that he was the best attacking halfback the Brumbies ever had, and we see him dart over here for a try. He, he showed a lot, he promised a lot. Well, he's sharp, and I, the longer it takes, sorry, the quicker it takes the likes of Tamur and Leofano to catch up with him. He likes to take quick taps. He likes to just play, you know, spont spontaneity footy, which a lot of the Argentinians are known for. Yeah, he'll be a massive addition to this side. Uh, obviously, the try scorers in that one was Kurundrani, Kubeli, Pocock, Fadi, and Stephen Moore, Josh Manray, Sam Carter, all seven of them. I mean, it was just freakish. And then we went to the Tars and Reds on Saturday night, a huge game. What did you make of the Tars? The Tars were good. They were sharp. They've got a little bit more to achieve in the first few weeks. Well, not more to achieve, it's harder for them to get to where they wanted because they've got a new coach. A bit of a tweak of how they're playing with a few new faces, whereas the Brumbies have got the same squad as last year, minus Q Belly, and they're playing the same style to an extent. So it's a, a fair bit of work for the, the Tars. That they've just been really happy with the win. They'll be disappointed how the game finished, but one of the better things for the Tars and, and Darrell Gibson and the coaching staff were really happy was how the young guys, Dave Horwitz was outstanding, Jed Holloway got no man in the match. These guys were, were really, really good, and Zach Guilford, he was just classy the whole way through. The little things Guilford adds, how he can keep the ball alive when he's pressure on, the, on his sideline, he manages to stay in. So they got a lot of class, the Tars, and I'm still expecting a, a few more weeks until they really start to you know, put in great performances. But they played with a really good speed, and their aggression highlighted by Kurt Lidl. Massive hit on Chris Sortia, that was uh, my highlight. Uh, they, the Reds, what did you make of them? I mean, they had 61% of possession, 61% of territory. Obviously, Jake McIntyre got over for the try in the second half. But, they, I mean, they had the ball. It didn't look like that watching the game, that they had that much of the ball and that much of the territory, really. I'm a bit concerned about the Reds, to be honest. Well, the Tars, obviously, Hooper, Carraro, Horwitz, who was sensational in his Super Rugby debut, Nick Phipps for the try scorers, and Jake McIntyre for the Reds, as we said. We head over the West and the Force Rebels. I mean, it was in some stinking heat there. How hard is it to play in the heat like that? Yeah, the first couple of rounds are always difficult. It's hard for the viewers at home to appreciate just how challenging it is. Young Reese Hodgie gets a double on debut. Didn't he have an interesting night? I think he started at the game as, as on, the on the wing. Mikey Harris had to start because Deborah Sini pulled out just before the game. So De Hodge went to fullback and then he ended the game at, at 10. Tommy Ellison here, he was fantastic, setting up two tries for Hodge. Again, we heard about how the force is going to play. I thought the force showed improved signs of, you know, an appetite to play. John Lance was good. Dane Halapetti, again, he's always been dangerous. Having lose, losing Debrasini before the game, I thought, you know what, I think the force will get him here. They didn't have Sturzak, didn't have Debrasini. Mike Harris got injured in the warm-up, only lasted 20 minutes. So in hindsight, like that's a massive win for the Rebels to go to Perth in tough conditions, slippery, and disappointing for the Force to be able to not take that trial form. They had a few good wins in trials, not to be able to, to match it up in you know, round one. Well, the Rebels head to Africa and, and Reese Hodge, a spectacular Super Rugby double on debut. And uh, also his Rebels debut, Adam Thompson got over for a try. John Lance, the only try scorer for the Western Force. And quickly, as we go around the grounds, the Hawas over there, I mean, they absolutely sensational. Coming down from 21 points down to come back and win this game, just spectacular. 
you can't rest easy against the Jaguars. One of the tries of the season already. Look at them go. They just keep the ball alive. They're so dangerous. What about the running halfbacks of the Argentines? Landajo. Landajo. Is it? <laughs> Landajo. Landajo. Yes. Okay. I've got to work on my you're pronunciations getting, of them. No, you're getting the Jaguars right yeah, there. Yeah, not too hard. It's, uh, it's brilliant how they do it. And, and again, at altitude, not an easy place to play. But the concern for the Jaguars is just they can't give 21 points away to, to good sides. But they're exciting to watch, and that's why we want to see them in this Super Rugby competition because of the tries they can score and the ability to keep the ball alive in open play. Like they're going to be a nightmare to play later in the season. If that, as we said at the last week, if they can just pick up a couple of wins away, lock down their home games, potentially get a home semi final. It's going to be tough for any team going over there. Huge, mm. yeah. Well, mate, it was a huge weekend of Super Rugby action. We're looking forward to another massive week ahead. Stephen Halls, thank you for joining us. No worries, thanks.